A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. Ethan Lindenberger was never vaccinated when he was a kid. So one day, he went on the Reddit website and asked a simple question. Where do I get vaccinated? His post went viral, landing him in the middle of a heated debate about vaccination and ultimately took him to share his story in front of the U.S. Senate committee. In today's episode, he reports back on his unexpected time in the spotlight and the new movement he's leading to fight misinformation and to advocate for scientific truth. I'm just a normal kid. You know, I lead debate clubs. I volunteer at my church. And back in November of 2018, I made a small Reddit post asking for advice on an issue that I was <laughs> encountering that I needed some clarification on. And this issue, as was stated in this introduction, was something towards uh, vaccinations and how I was not immunized against various diseases, including polio and measles, as well as influenza, HPV, hepatitis, and the standard vaccines someone my age would receive. Now, this question I asked was simple and pretty strange because, you know, I wanted to get vaccinated. That's kind of weird, but, you know, it happened. And then this turned into a public story because I wanted to get vaccinated. Because of this, uh, this question and this, this uh, story, because I want to get vaccinated and this, this uh, interesting situation I was in, I saw that I quickly was in this public setting of an extremely important controversy and discussion taking place. Now, I saw that the stories and headlines were pretty accurate for the most part. You know, after defying anti-vax mom, Ohio teen expresses why he got vaccinated. Pretty accurate, pretty true. And as stated, I testified in front of a Senate committee. So there they said, this teen who self-vaccinated just ripped his mom's anti-vax beliefs in front of Congress. <laughs> okay, I didn't really do that, but I said, that, that's fine. And certain, certain uh, news outlets took it a little further. God knows how I'm still alive. Danger 18 <laughs> finally gets vaccinated and attacks his anti-vax parents. So I did not attack my parents. Uh, that's not accurate at all. And, you know, really, my story was more about controversy. It was about how my mom was bad and I was good and I was ripping her a new one. Not true. Not what was happening. Uh, I never was rude towards my mother. And even in public settings where I expressed how her beliefs were misinformed, I said that she was a loving mother. And that's important to understand. Because a lot of people, I think, in the scientific community that understand why vaccines are so important can really be confused why someone would not vaccinate. Really, it's, we can compare it to someone not taking their child to the ER. That's a very dangerous situation to be in, and it shows some lack of empathy towards your children in some regards. And really, I can understand that. I can. But my mom, she was misinformed and misled by sources that convinced her that if she was a loving parent, she wouldn't vaccinate. Now, when I encountered this and I talked to my mom, it you know, didn't obviously go well at first because I was wanting to do something that she thought would either cause autism or... Uh, maim me for the rest of my life. And I said that I wanted to do this. Didn't really fly. Didn't really go well. <laughs> but the thing that I found interesting was that when I had started to get into this circumstance, do these interviews, there's one question I proposed. It wasn't a positive one. What in the world have I gotten myself into? That's what I asked constantly. Because again, I am not an expert. I am a normal kid. And now I'm talking to CNN and Fox News about a scientific discussion that really, should I really be facilitating? Should I be commenting on? And... <laughs> A lot of people question that, and for good reason, but I never claimed things that I didn't understand. I talked about my personal experiences. And really, even at the Senate hearing, I just talked about how misinformation is dangerous. My mom got a lot of her beliefs from social media, from Facebook, and from organizations that were allowing their platforms to push lies that were very dangerous. Now, I also saw that as I was doing this, and I was doing this as respectfully as I could and as accurately as I could, I was getting a lot of criticism, a lot of very angry people. I know as I, when I was in D.C. for that testimony I gave, I remember I was uh, looking around the office building and three ladies got in an elevator with me and said, I'm the reason that children are being maimed and murdered and I am basically Hitler. So <laughs> that was fun. And <laughs> so really, in, in, for most circumstances, for most teenagers and most people, when they get criticized, this leads to doubt. And that doubt leads to questioning. And that questioning leads to quitting. Because when you have a, a topic that you're interested in or a movement that you want to be a part of, and you're taking a stance and you're saying what's true, good ideas don't avoid criticism. And for especially young people, they have a hard time dealing with that. And these important discussions that need young people to take a part in, it takes a lot of commitment. 
And I'm not sitting here saying that I'm amazing and I'm cool, but here's the thing that's important. Through me joining this movement and this important scientific discussion, here's what happened. Facebook changed their platform. They were going to change how they approach anti-vax content. Amazon even removed misinformed books about autism and vaccines. And then recently, GoFundMe took down anti-vax campaigns. We're talking about how movements like this are causing actual change, actually impacting the way this game is played and the misinformation that's lying to people and convincing them of very dangerous ideas. Now, before I leave, because I only have a short amount of time, I want to give you guys one important thing to keep in mind, one important takeaway from this all, what you can do and what I did. What I did wasn't I didn't do amazing research and studies and take information and present it to people. I didn't have deep uh, intellectual scientific debates with people. All I did was share my story. And that's enough for most people. That's enough for most people to understand the anecdotal experiences, the real people behind the data. Because data doesn't resonate with people. People resonate with people. And you have to keep that in mind because when you are talking about a topic and you're sharing your story and sharing what is important, you need to stay authentic. Stay authentic to the data, to the information, to the importance of this topic. If I was talking to an individual and they said, why are vaccines important? I would say nothing alongside any other answer. I would, I would not in any way fathomably give them an answer outside of people are dying and that's important. And that children are dying and that's important. And that we're having disease outbreaks that should not be here. And I believe, as John Boyle put it, these diseases should be in history books and not in our communities. So because of that, you need to make a personal decision also to stand up for truth. You need to make a personal decision for yourself to say, this is accurate, this is what's real, and these lies are not okay. Because it started with me doing that on a personal level. I wasn't going from small town to Senate in a day. It wasn't like I go to bed and I wake up and there's Senator Isaacson and he's asking me questions about vaccines. It was a slow progression. And it started with me saying, this is true. My mom doesn't believe it, but that's okay. Because that doesn't change the truth. It doesn't change what's accurate and what's important. And honestly, the biggest thing, this whole idea of unbreakable, remain unbroken. When you stand up for what's true, when you have that criticism and you're trying to cause a movement, don't sway. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event at University of Maryland in College Park, Maryland. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Mid-Atlantic. Want to listen to the full talk? Find Ethan's talk and more at ted.com slash TEDxShorts. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you next time.